it's an inter it was an interesting week. Lessons for Virginia for not just this year, but next year. The blueprint, is it underway in terms of how campaigns are going to be run? Well, there are big uh, elections this week in New Jersey and in Virginia, but let's be clear. I'm not sure that uh, we care as much about what happens in uh, Virginia and New Jersey as they care about what happens in Oklahoma elections. What I think was the most important lesson that came out of these elections, though, is that our elections are safe and secure. Um, for a year now, we've been hearing about how there's been election fraud and how elections aren't safe uh, in the United States. And I think both of these, with record turnout, showed that our elections are safe and secure and that people uh, should trust our democracy as we go into uh, election season in 22. I didn't hear anybody crying fraud, by the way, or a nope. fake election. Your thoughts about what Virginia is teaching us? Well, it wasn't just Virginia. In, in deep, deep Democrat New Jersey, they, they really got to run for it, for one for their money. And then it looks like the Senate President Pro Tem in uh, New Jersey is going to lose. Here's what we've seen. The Democrats are scrambling. The idea of being argumentative, of being aggressive with parents, that's not working. Calling parents terrorists, which we've talked about that, the national version of the school board association did that. Parents showed up in a big way and they said they want to be involved. The, right now, this run of the incredibly partisan far left for the Democrats is not working. They're in for a slaughtering two years from now if they continue to be this aggressive with their electorate and this aggressive towards parents. Yeah, it's going to be an education election in Oklahoma. And McCall put his foot in his mouth. It was really bad. Okay, redistricting is coming up. A lot of controversy about this. Some people are saying uh, the maps aren't right. It's gerrymandering. Your thoughts? Uh, the maps in Oklahoma are great, and we will be coming in a special session, and we will be passing them. Right now, Oklahoma City has three congressional representatives. When we pass the new map, they're going to have three congressional representatives. They are contiguous. They are all around one area. If you want to look at gerrymandering, go look at the Illinois map. Go look at literally snake districts inside there. None of that happened. This was also an incredibly transparent process. The reality is... The maps reflect the diversity inside the state of Oklahoma. We have a very diverse state, but we have a very high Republican registration. And that's what the maps look like when they do it. Very proud of uh, Senator Paxton and Representative Martinez and the job they did. It's going to be an interesting topic, interesting special session. I had Andy Moore yesterday. Next week, the speaker is going to be in the hot seat. So we'll see where this goes. Your thoughts on the maps. Well, look, um, what Leader Eccles said that the uh, city will still have three rep representatives in Congress is true. Uh, but what is not true is that uh, those districts mean that um, someone that in Guymon has the same congressperson as someone in the Plaza District. And look, we've talked about on this show how many times and how frustrated we are with Washington, D.C. And why are we so frustrated with them? Because they can't get anything done. And why can't they get anything done? Because we continue to draw districts that don't make sense. Districts that include groups of people that don't necessarily belong in the same district together. If we want this system to work in the way that it's intended to work, then we need to have congressional districts that look like the people that live in them. These districts do not look like that. It's going to be interesting. Coming up, the vaccine mandate has been, t we're told when it's going to happen. We're not talking about immunized either. Be right back. All right, so now we know when the federal mandate, you've got to have businesses 100 and up, have to be vaccinated to get that federal sugar, as they say. Your thoughts about what's about to happen January the 4th? It's ridiculous, is my thoughts. Number one, the feds have absolutely no authority to tell, but the, fed, the government can't tell people what they can and can't put in their body, that this is just absolutely absurd. And then they know it's absurd to put this insane 100, 100 limit on it. So if you're below 100, then the mandate doesn't make sense. But if you're above 100, then it does. It's ridiculous. And who I'm really proud of is Attorney General John O'Connor, because he called it ridiculous and he filed a federal lawsuit to stop it in court. My prediction, it is going to be stopped in court. And there's some lines on the state level. We already have the state level Democrats coming out for the mandate, the federal mandate, saying they're against the O'Connor lawsuit. That's the purpose of it. And I'm proud of the House of Representatives. We knew this was coming. We planned on it. We gave extra money for them to be able to push back on the feds. Full employment for lawyers activity. And by the way, I mean, the OSHA director is going to be a little more savvy than, say, Roger Goodell and knows the difference between vaccinated and immunized. Hello, Aaron, sitting at home today. <laughs> Your thoughts about where this is going in all seriousness. 
Well, look, I don't think that federal government mandates on businesses in the state of Oklahoma is any better than state government mandates on businesses in the state of Oklahoma. Let businesses do what they feel like uh, is in the best interest uh, of them and their employees. Um, but in that same regard, I think a lot of what we've talked about this week has to do with Oklahoma City Public Schools and their firing of six teachers uh, that refused to go along uh, with the mask policy that they had. All of them were given the opportunity to have a medical exemption. None of them took it. They all wanted to use the court system in order to make things worse. That doesn't help our students. It doesn't help our teachers. It made it about themselves. And I think the school district made the right choice. Okay, well, there's going to be a lot to talk to about between now and January the 4th. All right, two-year anniversary. You guys worked together on a bill, House Bill 1269, a few years ago. Two years ago, to be exact, it's been in law, it became law. It has a lot to do with the criminal justice reform. Two years after the passage, what do you think? Well, look, two years after the passage of House Bill uh, 1269, still one of the greatest things that I had the opportunity to work on, uh, not only uh, from a policy perspective, but with my good friend, uh, John Eccles, who I sit with on this show. Um, worked with him, worked with Congresswoman Bice uh, on this. Um, it has allowed thousands of families to be whole again uh, by enacting the largest commutation uh, in United States history uh, back on November uh, the 1st, um, two years ago. It's such an incredible opportunity to work on really important policy that matters uh, for the people uh, of the state of Oklahoma and done in a bipartisan way. Um, still incredibly proud of that moment. 1269, you're author along with Jason. What do you think? You know, one of the things that I love, I love it when people outside, that I've been stopped before, talked about the show and said, you know, John, I disagree with almost everything you say, but I sure like the way you treat Jason. And my answer is always the same. Then you get the point of the show. You get the point that we can disagree, we can have issues of strong disagreements, we can be who we are, but there are times we can come together and work together for the common good on the areas we agree on. 1269 was one of those. We took the will of the people on the computation for low level, level drug offenders, what the people voted for, and in a bipartisan manner applied that retroactively, changed a lot of lives. It is a great example of what you can do. Yeah, there's areas of disagreements, but we can also focus on what we agree on. Hey, thanks to you both for that legislation on behalf of the people of the state of Oklahoma. See this again at news9.com slash your vote counts and follow me on Twitter at Mitchell Talks.